Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished guests, allow me to begin by expressing my deepest condolences to families and loved ones of the victims of the ill-fated flight ET-302. I will first deliver Singapore's national statement, followed by the Asia-Pacific statement arising from our meeting in January. We must take urgent action to protect our planet for future generations. To develop sustainably, we need a paradigm shift by changing our production and consumption patterns from the linear take-make-throw approach to a circular one that uses, reuses resources endlessly. This circular approach is supported by three pillars. First, reducing our production and consumption with the support and participation from all stakeholders. Second, building a strong foundation in science and innovation to turn waste into resource and generate new economic spin-offs for our people. Third, enhancing global and regional cooperation to accelerate the shift of economic systems towards more sustainable trajectories. Let me share how Singapore is building on these pillars. The key to achieving sustainable consumption and production is to reduce what we produce and consume. This is why Singapore is designated 2019 as the year towards zero waste. The aim is to imbue a greater awareness of resource scarcity and mobilize the nation to protect our resources and environment by consuming and producing less. We also need innovative, innovative solutions to maximize resource efficiency and do more with less. This year, Singapore will begin construction of a world's first, an integrated facility for used water and solid waste treatments. It leverages circular economy principles to reap synergies from the water energy waste nexus. To encourage others to find new ways to turn trash into treasure, we launched a $45 million Closing the Waste Loop Initiative Fund, research supporting circular economy approaches. National efforts are critical but insufficient to address global environmental challenges. Partnerships and dialogue through global platforms such as UNIA help accelerate the seeding of new ideas, adoption of innovative environmental solutions, and implementation of collaborative projects. On a regional level, Singapore recently hosted the third forum of ministers and environment agencies, authorities of the Asia-Pacific as part of our efforts to galvanize regional action. I will therefore now present a statement of the outcome of the third forum of Ministers and Environment Authorities of Asia-Pacific held in Singapore last year. This year, I had the honour to chair this ministerial meeting of 41 countries in the Asia-Pacific region. The meeting saw a record turnout of over 35 high-level representatives, including a head of state, a head of government and ministers. In the interest of time, I will read out a summary of the four key outcomes of the forum. First, the forum identified priority issues on sustainable consumption and production in the region. Delegates also shared their national actions and experiences on implementing solutions related to sustainable consumption and production, and discussed progress within the region to attaining the SDGs. Second, the forum noted the progress on regional implementation of resolutions and decisions of the last UN Environment Assembly. The forum further requested UNEP to scale up work on marine litter and plastic management, raise awareness on air pollution at national level, promote circular economy and resource efficiency. Third, the participation of UNIFOR President Slim Kisler, Slim Kisler and his interaction with delegates on the draft ministerial declaration is very much appreciated. The forum expressed support for a declaration that was ambitious but practical, reflecting the differences in national circumstances. The meeting also stressed the importance of providing technology, capacity building and financial support and for developing countries. And fourth, finally, one common theme that emerged from the forum was the need to have new forms of economic growth, such as the approach of circular economy, in transforming waste into resources. Circular economy also requires strong research and development and innovation. Further, 
there is a need for a coordinated regional approach to promote a regional circular economy. Overall, the forum provided a useful opportunity for the countries in the Asia-Pacific to exchange views and coordinate approaches. We look forward to the next ministerial meeting to be hosted by the Republic of Korea. The full version of the regional statement will be submitted to the Secretariat. Thank you.